Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. Glad you could join me here today. Our topic of the day is the seven signs of oxidative stress and rapid aging. Why this topic is so pertinent and why I wanted to bring it up this week is because we talked about the best and worst oils to cook with last week. And a lot of questions kind of got raised about what is oxidation? What is free radicals? How does it lead to aging? So we're going to talk about that today. And we're also going to share with you seven signs that you might start to see creeping into your life. And if you do, okay, you know, it's time now to take oxidation, overall inflammation, which is called inflammaging and antioxidants a little bit more seriously. So let's get started. So First things first we want to understand is that oxidation and aging happens to all of us. So oxidation is simply a process in the body of our body responding to the natural human metabolism and responses of everyday life. Now, that is breathing. It's literally eating. It is exercising. All of these things where we take more and more oxygen in, we start to create, believe it or not, more free radicals. Now, you might say, well, that seems counterproductive, right? Because we need to breathe. We need to move our bodies. Uh, we need to do all these things in order to be humans. And I agree with you. Now, when we're younger, we do a much better job at squelching inflammation, free radicals, and simply removing them from our bodies. Now, the way that we do that is through certain natural antioxidant systems in the body. Something called superoxide dismutase. We have things like glutathione. We have essentially antioxidant-based molecules in our body that are formed from certain compounds in the body naturally, and they help to essentially keep us young, keep us growing. And then all of a sudden, we get into our later 20s and we say, oh, the body basically turns a switch. And it says, you are no longer in the anabolic growth-based phase. You're now moving to more of what's called a transitory phase in Ayurvedic medicine called the pitta-based phase. Pitta phase is anywhere from like 30 to 60 years old, could be 25 to 55, within that time range. The beginning phase of life is the kapha phase. I'll link up a podcast on this if you're interested in the different phases of life. Head on over to stephencabral.com forward slash 2203 for that Ayurvedic-based podcast. And then as we move on past our 55, 60, 65 age time frame, we move into the vata-based stage, which is characterized by then rapid aging because of rapid catabolism and oxidation. That means essentially our tissues are breaking down faster essentially than they are rebuilding. And again, this is an oversimplification, but essentially it means that you're losing muscle mass, you're losing bone mass, hormone levels are going down, skin is th thinning, collagen levels are depleting. All of these things are happening in the body. Is it happening all at once? No, not necessarily, but gradually, just a little bit more every single year. It's like the statistic that I gave you before. On average, uh, women, uh, men, again, as I say, men are not far behind this, but women are losing about a half a pound of muscle per year after the age of around 27. May not seem like that big a deal, but after 10 years, you're down five pounds. Another 10 years, you're on, down 10 pounds. 40 years later, you're down, what, 20 pounds of muscle mass. Might not seem like a lot, but it is a massive amount of lowering of your metabolic rate when you lose that much muscle mass. Not only does it affect your metabolism, the amount of calories you can take in, it affects your hormone levels, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone. It affects your blood sugar levels, less muscle mass, less energy, less movement, less need for glucose in general. So it is, it's disastrous. So again, everything is a slippery slope. Aging for right now, is inevitable, but maybe people like Dr. David Sinclair will figure out aging uh, once and for all. But for now, aging's inevitable. Here's the good news. We can slow it down. And we can't just slow it down a little bit. We can slow it down dramatically, meaning that there's a great chance for you to take your average life expectancy somewhere between 75 and 78 years old and move it all the way up to 88, 90 years old pretty systematically by following a lot of what I talk about here on the Cabral Concept not getting diabetes, not getting heart disease, not getting high blood pressure, not getting, hopefully, cancer. You do that, you've almost guaranteed yourself an extra 10 years of life. It's that remarkable. So I've shared that with you before, really how to grow younger. I'll link up that podcast as well, stephencabral.com forward slash 2203, uh, <clears throat> essentially how to grow younger by staving off 
the top 75% of all disease. And you can really do that. You honestly can through knowing your biomarkers, uh, knowing good nutrition, exercise, moving the body. I'm telling you right now, you can do that. You really can. So we can dramatically slow the aging process. So here's the thing though. How do you know if you're aging too quickly? How do you know if there's too much oxidative damage? Well, they go hand in hand. So if you're aging faster, it absolutely means there's more oxidative damage in your body. There's just more inflammation. There really is. So let's take a look at the top seven signs of oxidative stress and rapid aging. All right. The first one is this generalized fatigue, general fatigue. What is general fatigue? It's, it's pretty general, right? So what are we talking about? Well, we're talking about less get up and go when you first wake up in the morning, right? That's where it starts. Okay. A lot of people don't know this, but fatigue starts not with feeling a little bit more tired at night. No, that's, that's typically end of the road fatigue. Typical fatigue is where it starts, really starts to creep in lower cortisol in the morning lower energy in the morning. And that is from, again, various issues, one of them oxidative stress inflammation. So let's get up and go, really feel like you need to sleep in more, need more caffeine. You have less drive, you have less ambition, less get up and go, lower libido, lower overall energy. All right. So that was number one. Number two, is that energy doesn't just affect your body. So when I talk about energy of the body, I'm not really talking about the muscles, right? Your muscles can still lift weights. You can still do those types of things. That's not what it's about. It's about the nervous system, okay? So energy is about the nervous system, all right? When you have less drive, you have less ambition, you're producing typically less dopamine, less norepinephrine, maybe less cortisol, maybe things like that. Again, I'm not talking about overproducing. I'm talking about normal levels. You can find out your levels by running the stress hormones, mood and metabolism test. Best test out there that you can run, easy to run right at home. That's at stephencabral.com forward slash labs, or find a good local naturopathic doctor. Find a good integrative health practitioner level two, your choice, but run that lab for sure. All right. The second one, I talk about nervous system energy. Well, now what about brain energy, right? Brain energy looks like this, rapid sign of aging and oxidation. When you find yourself forgetting more often, confusing words, losing track of thought. That's memory loss. Brain fog is also just having fuzzy thinking, cloudy thinking. Your brain's tired. You're literally tired. Now, it's not, some people say, well, it's like a blood flow to the brain. Maybe, maybe in some instances, right? Possibly. It has so much to do with neurotransmitters, your cortisol levels, And what I'm talking about neurotransmitters are your dopamine and your norepinephrine. So much to do with that. Now, inflammation, though, closes up a lot of, doesn't close them completely, but closes up a lot of those arteries, feeding blood to the brain. And overall, when you're stressed, you're going to start to lower your excitatory neurotransmitters. Your body's going to go into more of a conservation mode. This is important to look at. (coughs) Excuse me. So those are the first two. Energy of body, which is your nervous system, Energy of mind, and that's that brain fog, memory loss, forgetfulness. Okay, we're not talking about dementia. We're talking about simply poor recall, slower recall. All of that matters. Number three is this. Third sign of oxidation, oxidative stress, and rapid aging. Stiffness or more muscle achy joints. Why does this matter? Well, if you're living the same life, but all of a sudden you're more stiff, you're more achy, Oftentimes we blame it on age. Okay, sure, we blame it on age. It's interesting though, because why that age? Meaning like, is 43 just that number? 57? Like, who's to say at what age that stiffness starts to set in? And why? You might say, well, it's from inflammation. It's from oxidation. That's correct, right? I mean, that, that is why it happened. So why now? <clears throat> That's what we have to look at. And we'll, we'll talk more about that towards the end. So we have to understand is that feeling stiff, feeling a lack of mobility is also dangerous as you age. You're more likely to fall. You're more likely to get injured. You're more likely to hurt yourself when you're picking things up. It it is very, very important. So keep an eye on that. Really, just start to think about that if it's starting to creep in. The fourth sign of aging kind of goes along with that. You know, the weakness of the muscles or the stiffness or the joint pain. It's the weakening of the eyesight. You might say, well, you know, 40 years old, eyes aren't what they used to be, 50 years old, 60 years old, 30 years old, whatever number you want to put at it, right? 
Uh, I've been staring at screens too long. Maybe, maybe, maybe all of that's true. And inevitably, all of it is. But why is it happening now? Why is it happening to a much greater degree? And a lot of that has to do, again, with inflammation, oxidative stress. <clears throat> because the, the capillaries that feed these small extensions through the temples, the eyes, all that, they're fed uh, with good nutrition or poor nutrition, right? We talked about lutein and zeaxanthin last time. Um, but the big thing is this. When you have a lot of inflammation, it just closes off a lot of the nutrients that get to the eyes, a lot of the blood flow that also get to the eyes. And eye strain is a real thing. And so we want to look at that, right? Lack of omega-3s. What? Lack of omega-3s is what? Well, more oxidation in the body because you have more omega-6s. So these things are all real. They're all really important. Uh, we talked about the lutein and zeaxanthin antioxidants. That was on, let's see, that was on episode 2191. If you want to check out that show, two best antioxidants for the eyes, uh, for sure, uh, are those two. Not the only things, but certainly those two. So we want to take a look at that. Weakening of the eye set is another sign like, oh, I'm getting old. Well, yeah, you, <laughs> you are if all these things start to happen. But let's reverse that, right? These are, these are all things that are reversible. They really are. Now, again, are they all eventually inevitable? To a degree, right? To a degree. But let's push them off another decade. Let's not have it happen now. All right, the fourth or the fifth one is this. Thinning of the skin, thinning of the hair, wrinkles, grain of the hair. All of this is oxidation. So you might say, well, you know, it has to do with lower thyroid. It has to do with testosterone to DHT. I would say all of that is also correct, all of that, though, has to do with inflammation and oxidation as well. If you have a lower thyroid, you absolutely have more inflammation in your body, like 100%. So I'm not saying oxidation is the root cause. There's something causing the oxidation. But what we have to understand is that that oxidation is nevertheless breaking down a lot of the proteins in your body. So what are those proteins? Well, they make up your skin, right? They make up your eyes, but they also make up your hair. They make up your nails, um, so all of this is, is important to look at it. If you see your body all of a sudden wrinkling at a faster degree or getting more age spots on it, or you see your hair thinning or grain, certainly a lot more oxidative stress. It really is. Your body is not able to keep up with the same oxidation levels as it once was. Number six is, I like to say this, a sensitivity to everything, right? So a lot of people, as they get older, they're more sensitive to light and to smells, and to sounds, and to less sleep, and to any dysregulation of their life, right? It just throws them off to a greater degree. This is essentially less metabolic flexibility, less able to deal with what life throws at us. Tendency towards more headaches, and eye strain, and just aches and pains, as I was talking about before. They're more, just more sensitivities. And this happens as the body neurologically and strength-wise, becomes more catabolic. It literally becomes weaker. It becomes more inflamed. It becomes more oxidized. It becomes more sensitive. So that is number six. Number seven is a susceptibility to infections. You say, oh, I never used to come down with a cold. I never used to get sick. I never used to take this long to get well. Any of those things. These are all signs that the body's defenses are overwhelmed. They're becoming weaker. You're not producing the same amount of secretory IgA, right? Secretory IgA is immunoglobulin A, first line defense in the nasal passages, in the mucous membranes, etc. So these, again, can all be rebalanced. They really can. And, and I know that um, it would be you would have more vitality for your 25 versus 65, but believe me, at 65, you certainly can. There's no doubt about it. So what I want to, I just wanted to share with you this, that no matter what age you are, you can certainly get back much more vitality than you have now, especially if you're not doing a lot of things right now to enable more mitochondrial function, more antioxidant function, better liver function. All of these things are going to enable you to better deal with the outside environment. And that includes everything just from breathing to eating to dealing with viruses, infections, uh, pollution, etc. So what we really want to do, as I, and again, I'm, I'm talking about this, but I've, I've talked about it for a number of years now. It's, it's going back to what I wrote about the rain barrel effect. And by the way, the book is free. So anybody who hasn't read it yet, you can just go to stephencabral.com. You'll, you'll find it somewhere. The book is free. And it goes through the de-stress protocol. 
But you need to look at the diet, the exercise, right? Diet, high in antioxidants, high in rainbow colored foods. Exercise, move your body. Don't overtax it though, right? Stress reduction, toxin removal. Do your seven day functional medicine detox every 12 weeks. Get the rest that you need. Your body repairs the seven to nine hours that you sleep at night. Work on those emotions. Work on unresolved trauma. The scientifically backed supplements, they're there. They work, right? The advanced renewal kit that contains the cell boost will boost your mitochondria. It's clinically proven to do so. The Inflamasooth will help support healthy levels of inflammation. The daily vision, the daily brain support, all of these nutrients are there if you need them. Again, if you've never heard about any of them, that's okay. You can find them at stephencabral.com forward slash shop, and that will link right over to Equal Life, all the different products. Um, you can look at longevity, or you can go to stephencabral.com forward slash longevity, and they'll all be there. But again, just become familiar with the nutrients. These things actually work. And the last part of the de-stress protocol is the success mindset. The success mindset enables you in the first place to know that this is possible, to know that change is possible, to know that you're worth it and that you deserve to have more energy. You deserve to be healthy, happier and healthier. You honestly do. That, that is, that's your potential. It's what you're supposed to have. And anyone that's told you otherwise that, oh, it's just a part of aging and it happens to all of us. Oh, isn't it tough getting old? Please limit the amount of the people that speak those things into your ears, right? We need to limit that. We need to hang around with more like-minded people. You can go to cabralsupportgroup.com. It's completely free. 15,000 people around the world. They're there to support you. They're there to help you. They're there to cheer you on. You have a tough day? Bring it over to the group. You want to share a success story? Bring it over to the group, right? It's completely free. Uh, and here's the thing. We're, we're all here to help each other out. That's really what we are doing. But I need you to understand that these things are all possible for you. And if you heard me go down those top seven and you were checking off like one, two, three, uh, four, I have these, we just want to start working on it now. We really do. Functional medicine detox, running something like the big five or at least the starter kit or even the hor stress hormones, minimum metabolism test, uh, beginning to... Uh, do something just like the daily nutritional support or the daily foundational protocol, eating more of a plant-based diet. I'm not saying you can't eat meat, fish, all those things. I'm not saying that. Get to more of a Mediterranean-style diet. I mean, these things are all clinically proven not only to help you live longer, but to actually enjoy your life, meaning better quality of life because while you're alive, you're not swallowing a handful of medication every single day to keep you alive, right? So that's really what I want for you. I just want you to know that all things are possible, that you deserve this, you really do, and that if I can ever be of help, of course, just reach out to my team, let me know. Thank you so much for tuning into today's show. I appreciate you, I thank you, and of course, feel free to share this show with anyone you believe it could serve. <laughs>